video games really do need sound. So in this video, we're going to look at how to add a sound to our game, but also set up an audio manager, which allows us to manage those files as our game grows. This will help you to avoid situations like I ran into here, where I've placed a waterfall sound effect on one object out of the hundreds in this scene, and when I wanted to turn it off, I couldn't remember where to find it. Evidently, it was hidden deep down in the recesses of a water file game object. This is something we want to avoid, and having an audio manager will help us to do that. I'm Matt with Nightrun Studio. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to our hierarchy, where we can right-click and create an empty game object called Audio Manager. We'll then head down below, right-click again, to make a C-sharp script with the same name. At this point, we can click on the Audio Manager in the hierarchy, head over to our inspector and just add the component audio manager. While we're here, we'll also add an audio source so that we can hear the sound. And we'll just unclick play on awake so that it doesn't start playing sound right as soon as we turn the game on. At this point, we can head into our audio manager. I'll just begin by getting rid of the update method as we won't be needing that. And for this script, we're gonna start by making it work and then we'll add some features as we go in order to optimize and make it better. So let's just start by making a reference to the audio source we just added to the audio manager. We'll then load our first sound, which will be an audio clip and we'll just call this one jump. Now in order to play that effect, we're just gonna make a method here. We'll call it public void jump. And here what we're just gonna do is tell our audio source that it needs to load the clip called jump and then we'll tell the audio source to play that clip. Now we just need a way to test whether or not that's working, so we'll just call jump in our start method. Now in Unity, we'll just drag our audio source into the audio source box, and then we're also just gonna load a sound effect for jumping. Now when I press play, just before the picture even comes on, our start method causes that jump sound effect to play. Of course, nothing's happening when I press the jump button. We've got a little work to do to make that happen. For this, I'm heading into my player movement script, and this will work regardless of how you handle movement in your game. But for my case, I need to find the line where I actually make the jump happen. I'll just make a note for myself that this is where we want to play the jump sound. Normally what you would have to do here is make a serialized reference to the audio manager, then come down below and tell the audio manager to call the jump method. Now this would work, however, it's gonna be annoying to have to make a reference every time we wanna use a sound effect and then have to drag and drop that into a box in the inspector. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our audio manager and we're gonna create a singleton. And in order to do this, we're gonna make a static audio manager reference, which we'll call instance. And you'll notice that the type is audio manager, just like the name of the script. Now that instance variable is what our other scripts are gonna to talk to, so we need to fill it. To do that, we're gonna to go to awake, and here we're just gonna check. So if instance is null, meaning we don't yet have an instance of the audio manager, we'll make this audio manager fill that variable. However, if we enter a scene that already has a audio manager, we can't have duplicates. And so we're going to destroy this game object in that case. One other thing we wanna do while we're here is set this up so that when we move from scene to scene, the original audio manager travels with us. And to do that, we just type in don't destroy on load. And then in brackets, we just put game object. So now that we've set up the singleton, let's move back to our player movement script to see how that helps us. We can now get rid of this reference to the audio managers. We don't need to do that anymore. And in the future, if we want to call a method from our audio manager, we just do audio manager dot instance and then the name of the method we want to call, in this case, jump. There we go. Every time I press jump, we get the jump sound effect being played. Now that's all well and good for sound effects, but what about music? Now I should note that if you're making a really large game, you might want to create a second audio manager called Music Manager, set up essentially the same way, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to do it all in one place. Now before we get into the code for this, I do want to address one potential problem, which is say you've got music playing in your scene, but you want the jump effect to happen. It's going to replace the music, which is not what we want. So let's add a second audio source for our music. Now when we get into our script, we can just add another audio source reference. This time, let's call it music source. Now, when we want to play that music, we can head down below and make a public void. Let's call this scene music as we use the same method to load the music for all of our scenes. Now to make this work, we're going to go music source dot clip, and then we need to decide what clip this is going to equal. Now for this, we're going to create an array of different music clips, but first I'm just going to make a header here to keep things nicely organized. I'll call it scene music, and inside I'm going to make a serialized private reference to audio clips, but this time we'll use square brackets to create an array. 
Let's call this one scene music. So now down here, we're going to need to pass in some information. Anytime we are loading a scene, we're going to need to let this audio manager know which scene it is that we're loading. So here we'll make an integer called scene number so that it expects a number to be passed in. And then it will load the clip that corresponds to that number. So scene music, and then inside of square brackets, we just put scene number. Then we simply tell the music source to play that effect. So now we're all set up to receive it, but let's make it actually work. Now, first of all, for testing purposes, let's head up to start and have it play element zero to begin. So we'll call scene music with an element of zero. Back in Unity, we'll see that we now have this scene music array where we can drag in our elements. I'll put Willard's theme for the main menu, and then just add a couple of songs for my other scenes as well. We'll also want to grab that second audio source and put it up in the music source slot, and then open up the audio source and just turn off play on awake. Now as soon as we enter the scene, the music begins to play, and when I jump, it does play the sound effect, but it's a little hard to hear over the music, which I'll just have to turn down a little bit in my audio source so that they're mixed a little better. Now let's say that you want to load different music for whatever scene you happen to be in. Now this will look a little different depending on how you're handling your scene changing. However, the concept will be the same. First of all, you'll need to make a serialized private integer for the scene number. This is how our array will know which song to play. Next, you'll just come down below wherever your scene manager loads the new scene and tell the audio manager dot instance to call the scene music and then just pass along that scene number integer. Now for testing purposes here, I've actually got my scene changer and you can see that I put it on this fish here. And all I need to do is if I'm going to be going to scene two, I would put a two there and now it should play element two when I enter that collider. Let's check it out. So we have our first music playing. That's working well. And new music when I enter scene two. Though of course that pesky waterfall is still playing in the background. Now before we get into our final use case for the audio manager, let's just power it up a little by making it a prefab. We can do that just by dragging it down into our assets folder. It'll turn blue, and that just means it's now linked to all other audio manager prefabs in the game. So now let's say that I want to add my audio manager into a new scene. I can just drag it up into the hierarchy, and all the settings will already be set up. Now let's use this audio manager to create some sound when we press buttons. You will need Text Mesh Pro for this, so you can go to Window Package Manager if you don't already have it and download it there. Otherwise, though, let's just add a UI canvas. And then right-click on the canvas, go to UI once more, and load Button Text Mesh Pro. Well clicked on the button, we can head over to the inspector and look at the button component specifically. Here in the on click part, we're just going to hit plus, which allows it to talk to a script. Let's drag the audio manager in that. And we don't have a function yet for this, so let's write one. Now first, let's just make an audio clip reference here for when we press a button. I'll call it button pressed. Oh, we'll take jump out of the start method, so that's not playing every time we start the game. And now we can head down below jump, and actually let's just set some comments here so that our music is kind of down below and sound effects are up above it. Here we'll make a new method, a public void on button pressed, and we'll just load into our audio source the clip for button being pressed, and then play that audio source. Now if we go over to our inspector in that on click section, we've got the audio manager. Now we can click on function here, go to audio manager and select our on button pressed. Also, don't forget to actually load a sound effect for when you press the button. And I'm just gonna turn down the volume a little of my music source so that it doesn't overpower the sound effects. So you can hear the music loading right away when we get in the scene. And if I click on the button, sound effects playing nicely. I'm just going to turn off that kind of ugly button here and see if my scene change music works. So let's go new game. And there we go. We've got different music being loaded for the new scene and different music again when I enter the next. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed the video, please take a second to just hit that thumbs up button. Until next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.